every Wednesday, uh, Tibet Museum conduct Tibet Awareness Talk series, and I think it, this is very important and helpful in creating awareness. And the way Tibet Museum is working to create awareness through exhibition all across India, uh, where important events are taking place, I think this really helps. So I would really like to appreciate whatever uh, Tibet Museum is doing. Community uh, service across the world. Talking about community service across the world, different countries have different means of serving community. So it, is, it has different contexts, different process, different nature, different methods, but ultimately the goal is the same. The goal is to help bring positive changes in the community, in the country. The goal is to help fulfill our important purpose, working for a good cause, and ultimately help build and strengthen the community as a whole. So when I talk about serving one's community, so what do you think, what comes in your mind, talking about serving your community? So what do you think about it? Sharing. Yeah? Yes, His Holiness said it's time for to begin sharing. Right. Sharing. In sharing heart. skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sharing conversation. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Helping the needful people. Right. Yes. So uh, this has different meanings according to different individuals with different perceptions. Have you ever felt like in your life you have made an impact in one's life, people who surround you or in your community? Have you ever felt that you have made a difference, you have made an impact, though in a small way? Have you ever felt like that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Again, coming to serving community across the world, you must have heard about Peace Corps, Peace Corps in the U.S., right? So this organization, as you know, gives an opportunity for motivated change makers to bring positive changes, to go outside the U.S., places like South Africa, places like uh, Asia, where there are problems occurring and uh, to help build the community as a whole by using your skills. So this is what Peace Corps does. And similarly in India, there is IndyCorps. You must be knowing, I guess. Yeah, IndyCorps uh, is a non-profit organization that helps bring like-minded people who want to bring positive changes in the community and eventually help build the community. So likewise, uh, there is Tibet Corps, which is an initiative of the 14th Cabinet, and it gives a platform for Tibetan professionals from Tibetan diaspora to use their skills and uh, apply it to the host institutions where the need is required, and eventually help mobilize us, help unite, and give back to the community collaboratively, collectively, help strengthen the community. So uh, why I say it is important to participate and contribute for Tibet. So uh, talking about Tibet, I would say Tibet issue is something which is different from the rest of the world. That like this cannot be compared to countries which has nation, countries those are independent. Because we are currently working for a movement to make it stronger, to make it resilient and help bring changes in our community as a whole. And why it is important? Because it is an individual and civic responsibility. Being a Tibetan, you feel the Tibetanness within yourself. Because of the Tibetan population, we just 6 million Tibetan scattered all across the world and by using your skills, by doing whatever you have capacity to work for a cause, 
we try to resolve our issue in different ways by working at the Central Tibetan Administration, by working at the non-governmental organization, by writing articles, poetry, and uh, through using the means of activists. So there are different ways. And how is it important? Because the situation in Tibet continues to get critical. You know, the number of people who have lots of hope for our cause, especially those in Tibet, they feel that, especially Tibetans in India, in exile, and Tibetans who are in the West, they would do something. And we have been trying for it, doing it. And the number of Tibetans who are so inspired and dedicated, motivated to do something for our cause, they even go to the extent of self-sacrificing their own body by self-immolating. Why? Just for our cause. Just because the world will see, the world will understand what the reality is, what is actually happening in China. So that's why they do this, to give a message with the hope that His Holiness will return to Tibet, with the hope that the reality will be reflected in the world. So, and another important thing is the unique language and culture that we have, the identity which is bound to show through our language and culture. And of course, Tibet sets an example for the rest of the world. How? Through religious point of view, through Buddhism. Because Buddhism, like other religions, do not just talk about how to be uh, a good person, good human being, but it also has a very deep logical meaning. When you go deeper, it's more like science. There are reasons behind everything. And also, very important factor is Tibet's environment. Of course, Tibet is considered third pole of the country, and how it is important is it is a source of living for so many people, like millions of people living in South Asia. So because of all this, I think Tibet is an example for Asia and the rest of the world. So that is why, especially, of course, non-Tibetans are there to support, but then being a Tibetan, you should feel this important need and the time to do something and participate and contribute for our cause. So, uh, talking about my experience, because of all which has been happening, and uh, although so much has been happening with our cause, there is lots of changes which has happened. But still, I feel that we should, no matter what is happening, we should continue to work for our purpose, our goal, which is to resolve our issue. And through this program, uh, it gives a platform for Tibetan professionals and Tibetan college graduates and talented Tibetans who are all over the world. So this is not just about staff appointment. Uh, it's more about leaving your job temporarily when you are engaged in a permanent job and sometimes when you think you feel that you really want to do something for your community, for CTA, and so uh, you take a break and you have this voluntarily feeling that you want to do something. It's about Tibetan serving Tibet, Tibetan community and cause at large. So uh, why it is important, why volunteering is important? Because some people might feel that, yeah, uh, why should I volunteer? Because I don't get anything out of it and there is no point doing this. Uh, many people have this thinking that, yeah, uh, you think about yourself, your family, your kids, and uh, fulfilling your self-interest, your goal. But then there are those kind of people who think that this is important. Why? Because although you're doing this without any self-interest, but still eventually it gives you a satisfaction. It gives you a mental reward. And then there are people, you know, I have known friends who are volunteering and then end of the day when you go back to your home, you feel that, yeah, I really had a good sleep, you know, I feel so good. It gives a sense of satisfaction. Because it's, it's not just about yourself. You're thinking about a community. You're thinking about people working together at a cause at large. And it helps fulfill the need of the community, improves lives, and helps connect with people from different communities. 
And of course, when you do something like this, it naturally inspires people. It encourages other people to do more. And then finally, you make a difference. So what more is needed? Which is a wonderful feeling. Uh, so these are some of the quotes which uh, the scholars have said. Like when you talk about uh, thinking about yourself, you're making a life. So this is like, you know, when uh, Winston Churchill has said, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. So it has a very deep meaning when we talk about this. Everyone wants to make a living, which is very clear. So you make a living by working for an organization, getting a salary, and then uh, helping your kids go to wonderful schools. But then how do you make your life? By how you give, by what you give. And I think that when you think about life in general, we see life very short sometimes, but then sometimes life is longer than what you think. And when you look back, what you did, when you think, you know, it's not just about yourself, you did something very different. Not about people doing ordinary things, but you are an extraordinary person by giving back, by doing something. So I think this gives a special feeling. So again, talking about Tibet Core, so this program inspires uh, Tibetans all over the world to engage and help build our community. In a way, Tibetans from America, Australia, Europe, India, Tibet, they come here and it eventually helps unite them by uh, using their skills and collectively giving back. So the basic requirements are, of course, you should be Tibetan and you should be of Tibetan origin. So there are also mixed Tibetans like American Tibetan, and uh, European Tibetan, Swiss Tibetan, who have come, who have served. This should, of course, come naturally. Like, you should be having this thinking that you are voluntarily, you want to do this by your own. And uh, should be Tibetan professionals, of course, and students who are specialized in their own field of subject where the host institution demands the need. So if you fulfill these requirements, you can apply for this program. <coughs> So aim of the program, as I said before, is the same. It gives a platform and it helps unite. And the eventual, the ultimate goal is to unite Tibetans and support Tibet and Tibetan cause by fulfilling the needs of the host institutions. So there are three categories of Tibetan who can apply for it. First is fellows with uh, 10 to 20 years of experience, those who are in the retired category, you can apply your skills, you can guide for a specific project and help fulfill the need. And the professionals are of course doctors, dentists, computer expert, engineers and um, professional teachers who have three to five years of experience can apply for it. And college graduates and postgraduates who are expert in the specialized fields can also apply for this. So talking about some of the highlights, the program was actually launched on 1st of April 2012 and so far there are 64 Tibet Corps volunteers who have come from different places and uh, media coverage has happened and we have uh, top talented like Seldon and Tsirimuamu Dombashi is an author and Sunan Farsi, he's an ex-members of parliament and uh, we also provide facilities to stay uh, uh, to, for the volunteers to come and stay. And not just about uh, serving at the host institute, like the departments of the CTA, but there are also branches. Under education department, there are different schools which comes. And under health department, there are uh, primary health center, all across the different settlements and on the home department there are different settlements. So uh, there are volunteers who have served as teachers, nurses at the health centers like settlements like Orissa, Bayekupi, Beer, and physiotherapists, health centers, dentists, and uh, counselor, lab x-ray technician. And uh, for the first time uh, there we have a doctor from United Kingdom. She is currently serving at the Hongsur settlement, which is in the South India. And uh, she served as a doctor currently at the moment because there is a huge need of doctor 
since there are so many patients coming and there is an, uh, a permanent doctor as such. So that's why through this means, she's actually helping and making fulfill the requirement that they demand. And there is one volunteer currently who is an American Tibetan and he is exploring digital social media and currently helping the websites of the CTA, specifically uh, Tibetan Entrepreneurship Development. Because of his skills, he's trying to develop the website and help make videos to promote the project. And uh, at the Tibetan Parliament in Exile, there is a translator with more than eight years of experience. He is helping with the translations of important documents, and especially he is helping with the charter which is important and which has been helpful. And there are also volunteers who become <coughs> served with the MBA background experience. Uh, he helped for the TED loan project. So uh, talking about volunteers who have come from Tibetan diaspora, as you can see here uh, from US, there are 15 who have come so far, uh, four from UK, one from Australia, one from Canada, 36 from India, three from Tibet, one from Nepal, and three from Europe. So we basically encourage all Tibetans who are everywhere uh, to use their skills to come back and give back. So this eventually is a platform which helps unite Tibetans. And what we say is like uh, when we assume after how many years, after many decades, what will happen is Tibetans will be 50-50. Like Tibetans, 50% of Tibetans will be here and 50% will be in the West. So I think thinking about such things in such circumstances, this is a platform which will actually help, you know, give them a chance to come here in such situation. So I think this plays an important role eventually. And uh, some of the position and openings where the volunteers could actually serve and have served so far, as you can see here, there are assistant project officers have come and uh, there are different projects at the CTA so uh, there are projects like middle way approach, human rights, uh, Tibet Medicare system so uh, for these projects they've come and they've helped and researchers have uh, mostly served at the Tibet Policy Institute and also uh, as you can see here there are professionals like physiotherapists public health assistant, animator, nurse, web developer and uh, English creative writing teacher for the CTA staff, museum developer and uh, youth outreach program coordinator and so on as you can see here. So briefly talking about how they have made a small difference with whatever capacity they have. In 2012-13 there are eight Tibet Corps volunteers and talking about Tenzin Jigme, he's from Nepal and he served as a physiotherapist with the professional degree and skills of physiotherapist. He served at the Tsuju Hospital which is in the Bailakubi settlement. So with his skills, what he did was he helped the patients with disability, he developed therapy programs, he looked after people who were suffering from these diseases and tried to create awareness. Uh, in the settlement itself, which has indeed helped many of them. And uh, Tenzin Selden from London, she served at the DIIR and the Cabinet Secretariat, and she mostly helped <coughs> improve the documents of the Middle Way approach, and she helped design outreach campaigning about creating awareness uh, on Tibetan issue in general. And uh, Tenzin Sampal from Washington, with the degree in animator and uh, experiences as an animator. What he did was he served as an animator at Tibet TV at the DIIR. So he mostly helped with the graphic designing of Tibet TV, producing rough cut to finish videos and contributed to overall creative vision during the service period that he served for. And uh, in 2013 to 14, there were 11 Tibet Corps volunteers. Sangi Chinsum from Dharamsala. She served at Soja Council and she basically assisted the medical officer in general and um, going to different places and homes in the settlements. She helped by providing health education 
and collecting data and overall improving the health system of the settlement. Again, uh, Tenzin Hansi from the US, she served as an animator mostly and uh, she helped by creating news introduction for the Tibet TV and by creating wipes and bumper, creating introduction for Tibet TV panel discussion where we talk about different uh, and important issues of Tibet and the CTA in general. And uh, she helped create graphic for the weather report, which we can... Uh, Tenzin Tashi from US, she helped compile the international resolutions and recognitions of Tibet, helped prepare research policies, economic policies of China, impact of economic lives of Tibetans, and rule of law in Tibetan areas of China. And uh, Srinamu Dongba is a writer, author, and she teaches at San Francisco University. What she did was she conducted a writing workshop for the CTA staff. And over the skills that she had, she helped improve the writing skills of the staff. So I was also there. I was also one of the uh, participants there learning, and uh, which actually helped many of the staff by practicing, by you know, analyzing, checking how we write. And uh, so there are different volunteers. If I just talk about them in general, volunteers who have come through the program like Youth Outreach Coordinator, try and create awareness about Tibetan issue in general by getting connected with the youth and by uh, creating awareness through social medias. And uh, Sitin Gwinkia from Toronto has helped the museum. So <laughs> she um, trained staff on principles and methodologies of project development. She helped develop communication materials and she developed museum exhibition facelift project. And uh, I'm sure this has helped the museum. And uh, Denja Chesse from Switzerland, she again served as a youth outreach program coordinator and she helped engage and connect the young Tibetans across the world and help create awareness through social media. And uh, talking about one of the professional, she is Pema Yida from Dharamsala. She is a dentist and um, she served specifically at Beer Tibetan Primary Center. And during her three months of service, she diagnosed 205 dental patients and treated them for extraction, filling, scaling, and dental x-ray. And we also have volunteers like Hapatashi, who served as a teacher at um, Tibetan Nehru Memorial Foundation, which is at Deradu. He taught business and accounts for 11, 12 students and social studies for 6, 7 for a year. And uh, now she has also served as an assistant counselor in English communication skills at the home department. Uh, there is a program called Youth Empowerment Support, uh, which is being conducted normally at the south of India, a place called Nila Mangala. So there are youths who get different training and different workshops to improve their computer skills, to improve their English skills, to help get their job. So for them, she did counseling. She uh, helped improve their communication skills in general, so which has been very helpful for them. So uh, Tobacco volunteers in 2016, uh, there are nine volunteers who have come, and some of them are currently serving the different host institutions. And uh, they are researchers at the Tibet Policy Institute, and translator at the Tibetan Parliament in Exile, and social media manager at Finance Department, a doctor at the Hunsu Settlement, web developer at Tibetan Computer Resource Center, likewise database developer, education department, and public health research analyst at Health Department. So, uh, again talking about uh, some of the things which has actually helped our um, volunteers by using their skills at different fields where it's required. Uh, this is helpful for different needs, like I explained before. Uh, you can see in the picture, uh, she's from Tibet. And her name is Pema Yangjun. She served as a primary teacher at the Lobati City School and served for nine months, nine months, sorry, uh, through Tibet Corps. And uh, she 
Actually, besides being a teacher, she also served as an assistant librarian there. And this has indeed helped the school. And uh, they even asked for the extension of the service. And here you can see in the picture, there is a professional nurse called Kamadoma. She served at Beer Primary Health Center, served for nine, mon nine months and then looked after the patients and she gave health education in general. And uh, she's from Ladakh, Tenzin Dolma. She served from August 2014 and uh, she actually served till the February of uh, 2015. And uh, she served as a lab technician at the settlement where there's a huge need. There are lots of patients, but need of a lab technician specifically. And she helped provide lab service and other work as per the direction of the medical officer and the secretary. Uh, she's Swiss. Tibetan, Tenja Chesty, she's from Switzerland and she served as a youth outreach officer at the Department of Information and International Relations for three months. With the use of social media, she helped create awareness about Tibetan cause and issue in general and by doing that, she helped connect and engage Tibetan youth everywhere. And uh, so there are different nurses serving at different settlements. Like in this case, she served at Orissa Tibetan Settlement and uh, she helped the patients by fulfilling their need, by looking after them, by uh, carrying the duties being given by the supervisors. And uh, there are also projects at the home department, like agriculture, at the agriculture section. There are solid waste management work and agricultural related work, which the volunteers have served through. And here also uh, Tibet Medicare system is a project which is very important and there is a special need to create more awareness about it. So here uh, Namdakla, he served there for a period of six months and he helped analyze the Tibet Medicare system and finally write a report on the program. This is at the Nila Mangala uh, and uh, she served as an assistant counselor. So you can see in the picture the students are being assigned a work and Uh, there is a volunteer named Tenzin Chuni. She served as a dentist at uh, Soja Council. And here, what she did was she conducted a dental camp and uh, she looked after 150 number of patients and extraction case and filling case. As you can see here, that's what she did during her three months of service period. So, what the Volunteers had to say that, as you can see uh, here, Tenzin Selden, she, what she said was, you know, she really felt the opportunity was wonderful, and then she get connected well, and then uh, she feels that, you know, it is important for more Tibetans across Tibetan diaspora to come use their skills and give back. And she is the first ever Tibet Corps volunteer who have come and served. So she has an experience of uh, auditing and uh, with her skills she served as the Auditor General. And she felt that it is the need and it is very important for even others to make, come and serve. And she is um, English Tibetan mix and she actually had to say that this has really helped her and uh, it's a two-way traffic for them basically to learn here the community, culture, language and overall how the city works and also <coughs> by using her skills helping build the community in general so this serves two purposes. So you can see he says uh, we have a right <coughs> chance to contribute our knowledge and skills for a right cause. And she thinks she had a wonderful experience here. So likewise,
There were different experiences which they had to share, and eventually the host department themselves, they feel that um, this has indeed helped, and uh, they also ask for more volunteers to come, use their skills and give back. Uh, the service opportunities, the current service opportunities, as you can see, few of them I've uh, mentioned here. Uh, there are needs of computer expert, translator, professional researcher, counselor, communication skills teacher, and different professional service opening are there. So how do you apply for it? So you can join the program by just applying uh, to the different opportunities on the website. You can contact through writing an email to tibetcore.net and you can send your CV and you can check your uh, the regular updates on Tibet Core page on Facebook and check out the openings and announcements especially on the Tibet.net website here's the link you just have to type Tibet Core service openings 2016 to 17 and there you see a list of openings which are mentioned and the service duration depends you know it starts from three months and it uh, there are also service durations like six months, nine months, and they can be extended to one year depending on the need of the in host institutions and the skills that you're using, if that has been really helpful for the department. And uh, the availability of service are at the departments of CTA, uh, schools under the education department, hospitals under the health department, uh, monasteries and nunneries under Department of Religion and Culture, branches under the Home Department, at the Library, at the uh, Medical Institute, at Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts, and different branches. So, uh, if uh, you are doing something for a good cause, this should be recognized. This should be given recognition. So, what recognition is being given, what appreciation is being given, are uh, those who come serve, they are provided a monthly stipend which starts from 6,500 to 7,500 to 8,000 depending on the category of professional that you are having. And uh, we also provide a place to stay at the Tibet Coral Cluster, so which is very comfortable and which is just near the entrance of the CTA. And then those who are serving in the settlements are provided a limited rent payment. And in the end, a uh, certificate of recognition is provided by the Sikong. So here you can see uh, Tashi Siden from the US. She served at the Human Rights Tax, and after she finished her service, she's been given the certificate by the Sikong. So the dormitory looks like this. Sorry. The dormitory looks like this. It's comfortable, and then uh, they're just discussing about what they have been doing and how it has been helpful for themselves and to the departments. So this is the logo which says Tibetan serving Tibet. So why I would say it's important because uh, His Holiness has been always saying that our cause is different because we are working for a cause which is based on truth, which is based on just, which is right. So I think no matter whatever has been happening, there are progress taking place and we should continue with the motive, with the commitment, with the dedication that we have. And that is why so many non tibetans across the world are supporting our cause because they know that it is based on truth. It is based on equality. It is based on just. And uh, I think uh, we should continue making the movement more stronger, resilient. And just to talk about this, like Gandhi said uh, during uh, the freedom fighting movement, what he said was it is very important, especially for the students who are at the school. Like when you take vacation, you know, it is very important to serve community in general because it gives a special feeling and it helps fulfill a need and a purpose and elder generations have worked so hard with a lot of hardship like talking about our self tibetans back in history they've really worked hard and they have a lot of hope for the younger generations to do something so I think 
we should continue with the legacy and we should continue with the belief and hope they have to do something. And because of course the Tibetan situation is getting critical and we can see how important it is. That's why it is important to take part, contribute. And since especially Tibetans in Tibet are doing so much through different means, I think uh, we have the opportunity, we have the platform to do a lot and that is why it should be taken. And uh, we should never forget what we are currently, where the situation is. And uh, not just that, but at the same time, what we can do, how we can do. And uh, roles and responsibilities as a Tibetan, especially as a, as a youth, I think uh, this should be considered really important. So what you can do is, um, like generally, uh, this is about Tibetanness within Tibetans, but uh, I would just talk in general and ask, like, would you think about using your skills and giving back to the community? Like, have you ever thought about it? Would you think about it now? Like, once, twice, as long as you can. Do you think this is something different? Yes. And uh, would you recommend this program to your friends and family? Do you think it has a meaning and this helps a lot uh, fulfill a need and purpose? Uh, if you will, I will... If, uh, I would request you to tell them to check the program on the Facebook and share to your Tibetan friends, if you have Tibetan friends, and also mixed Tibetan, of Tibetan origin, and contact tibetcore.tibet.net for more details. So why it's important is uh, because we would really want the program to become a large community of Tibetan professionals and university students which can be service to the departments and the institutions. Why? Because this is for a good cause. Why? Because it is for the good of community at large and uh, eventually help support our movement and make it stronger than ever, which can be done collaboratively, collectively, for a good cause and community. So, uh, what you can do besides, you can spread the awareness, you can help spread the word to your friends and family and uh, check the openings on Tibet.net and uh, there are different newspapers you can check and suggest your friends you think who are very efficient and who fulfill the requirement to apply for it and uh, let your friends know about it. So uh, this is um, during the opportunity that we get and uh, we got blessings from His Holiness the Dalai Lama here you can see the volunteers besides and uh, what he said was it is really important and it is really good that Tibetans are taking part Tibetans are coming from Tibetan diaspora and voluntarily have this mentality thinking to serve community and are actually serving our community through different means and different methods and this is important by eventually helping build the community and uh, more Tibetans across the world especially those who grew up in the West should come here should learn about our cultural community should get connected with the community should have belongingness should have Tibetanness to do something for our cause and uh, that's I think very touching and that's very helpful so uh, with this I would really hope that more Tibetans would try to take opportunity to give back and also learn from the community. So I would just uh, like to say that in the end um, it's more about when you talk about making a difference it's more like how you give back rather than what you get from the community. So if you are giving back more then eventually you are making a difference. You are leaving a footprint behind. So that's why I would say that um, Tibetans should continue taking this platform opportunity and uh, learning from the community and giving back to the community. Capacity you have, potential you have, I think if that could be used for a good meaning, good purpose, good 
with a good motive, I think that will give a kind of a feeling that you know you actually did something and you have you will have no regret about that for sure. And uh, that is why I would just like to encourage all of you here to do something meaningful in life and make a difference. Thank you. You have a question? It sounds like you are encouraging mostly Tibetan volunteers. Yes. You need uh, non-Tibetan volunteers as well? Uh, actually, uh, for non-Tibetan volunteers, you can directly apply, you can directly contact the relevant department and uh, there are so many organizations like non-governmental organizations so you can contact them and if you really think that this could be helpful there are opportunities for you. This wonderful presentation. Thank you. And we have a tea here.